today, plans for the Homet premiere in Wellington were revealed. And soon New Zealand will once again transform into Middle Earth and Wellington into the middle of Middle Earth, which has got to be an improvement following the debacle that was Wellywood. But what, if anything, will be following the film trilogy? The New Zealand film industry is estimated to be worth hundreds of millions of dollars to our economy each year. Without The Hobbit, what else is there to keep that industry going? Our Minister John Key has just returned from a trip to Hollywood where he visited all the big studios and asked what it will take to lure them here. Dan Parker and cameraman John Fleming went with him. an outsider looking in, Los Angeles is awash with movie studios, money and motorcades. At least that's the impression we get following the Prime Minister around for 72 hours. His mission, to woo Hollywood into spending mega bucks on mega hits, produced and filmed in New Zealand and creating more jobs for New Zealanders. They take it very seriously when a Prime Minister turns up. Um, we're one of a number of locations around the world where all of these studios have either made television or movies before, and they're interested in making movies and television programs in New Zealand. That's got to be great for our country. And so I think um, it's very worthwhile use of my time. Warner Brothers got to make first use of that time. They've already invested heavily in New Zealand and Peter Jackson. I like visitors as much as the next Hobbit. But I do like to know them before they come. With The Hobbit due out in November, Film NZ want to capitalise and lift our profile with the studios. And they have a movie-loving Prime Minister flying the flag. A wave on this occasion was apt, because from then on we didn't see much of Key. Unlike the usual political trip, where MPs or PMs are falling over themselves to look busy and productive, almost everything in LA happened behind closed doors. Most especially the ultra-exclusive dinner party on the first night, hosted by Titanic director and soon-to-be New Zealand resident James Cameron. While we were trying to find the secret location, Key's entourage taunted us with a Twitter update. The dinner last night, James Cameron hosting something for you. How do you pull off something like that? Yeah, well, it was at uh, John Landau, his, uh, his partner's house. So um, uh, James and John really got the glitterazzi of um, Hollywood to turn out in terms of the, the movie studios. And that's really one of the big advantages. If New Zealanders wonder why we uh, you know, encourage some people to come and live in New Zealand, it's just a great example. He wants to make movies in New Zealand. He loves the country. And he can use his contacts to help uh, promote the movie industry in New Zealand. And on day two, things didn't get easier. We saw a lot of fences, while inside Key and his social media accounts were getting down to business. To be fair, getting in these studios is next to impossible if you don't have something to offer. But fortunately for Key, he did. The studios enticed by a few extra taxpayer dollars. In the case of incentives, they, they think New Zealand's offering is a good one. Um, but you know, they'll always make the case that other countries offer more. I don't think New Zealand necessarily wants to have a big race in that area. I, I think you know, for the most part we've got a pretty competitive offering. There are some, some technical things we could always have a bit of a look at, but there will always be countries that offer more as an incentive, but they may not have all the advantages New Zealand's got. Regardless, Key says subsidies for television production could be reconsidered, and infrastructure for sound studios is needed to further improve our appeal. Not that we could confirm that with anyone in Hollywood. Despite our requests, no one from the studios or the Motion Picture Association of America would give us an interview about what they hope to gain from meeting with Key. But one thing Key told us is they're excited at the prospect of improvements to intellectual property laws and the possibility of New Zealand signing up to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Day two ended with a function at the official residence of the Consulate General. Once again, we had to find the location ourselves. So this is South Rockingham Avenue, home to stars like Antonio Banderas, the late Phyllis Diller and O.J. Simpson before he went to jail. It's also where John Key and consular staff are trying to woo Hollywood's top people, trying to get them to come to New Zealand and film. And once again, media weren't invited. Our final day was spent at Sony Studios, and while Key got to meet the cast of Body of Proof, we got on to a studio lot for the first time. I don't think you guys are supposed to be filming down that direction. It was our last chance to hear from Key and ask whether his trip had been a success. 
If you think about the access we've had over the last sort of 48 hours, we've seen the heads of all of these studios. It's not easy getting in to see Bob Iger at, at, at Disney. It's a massive corporation. It's the guy that runs Disney worldwide and sits on the board of Apple. Uh, you know, Michael Brunton here at Sony, you know, uh, Barry Meyer over at Warner Brothers, I mean, the serious players, and that is the big advantage of when someone like myself and the job I'm in, you know, comes to Hollywood, you get access to those individuals. But there were no firm commitments from any of the studios, so now we wait. As Wellington gets excited about the upcoming Hobbit premiere, the real concern for the government will be what, if anything, follows it.